So today we're going to learn about the quadratic formula. Some of you might remember this from grade 10, some of you might not. I believe um, grade 10 academic courses do it, but not the applied ones. So no worry though, we're going to go over it. If we were to have something in standard form, a quadratic equation in standard form, uh, we can sometimes, and usually with most of the examples I give in math class, you can factor it. Right, just like we did last chapter, we turned it into factored form, and then you can figure out the roots of the equation. However, sometimes they can be a little bit more difficult to factor, so we have this quadratic formula, which we will learn how to use today, which will be used to find the roots of an equation. Okay. Now, sometimes when you solve this, you will get a negative number under the square root. That simply means that there are no real roots. Because you can have, um, as we've studied before, you can have um, a quadratic function which does not cross the x-axis. So that's perfectly fine. And we'll look at more examples about um, when we have negatives under a square root in tomorrow's lesson. Okay. Today let's see how we can use this quadratic formula. So let's look at an example. This is the example that's given to you, and then we'll try one on our own. But here we have x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Now you could factor that. This one's actually fairly simple to factor. Or we can use the quadratic equation. So let's use the quadratic equation. Now in standard form, you have your coefficients a, b, and c. Now in this case, our a coefficient would simply be 1. Our b coefficient would be negative 8, and our c coefficient would be 12. So here we have written down what our coefficients equal. And we're going to take those coefficients and put them into our quadratic formula. So our quadratic form is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So when we take our coefficients, for example, negative b, so we have negative, and our b is negative 8, so we substitute negative 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 8 squared, minus 4ac, so minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 12. All divided by 2a, where a is Now we sort of simplify what's under the square root, which gives us 16. And this is um, what we're left with. The square root of 16 in this case is 4. But if we just look at this, there are two possible ways to solve this. Plus or minus. So if we do plus, we get 8 plus 4 over 2, which is 12 divided by 2, or x equals 6. But if you do minus, you get 8 minus 4, which is 4, divided by 2 is 2. So that's two possible solutions. That makes sense because a quadratic could pass the x-axis. All right, so let's continue. So in this case, we have two possible roots, which tells us that uh, the quadratic crosses uh, the x-axis in two places, at x equals 2 and at x equals 6. Let me just pause it there, see if you have any questions. All right, so question one, it says solve um, 2y squared minus 3y minus 2 equals 0. So the quadratic equation, it said x equals. But in this equation, we're using y's. Don't let that scare you. We can rewrite the quadratic equation to say um, y equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Because in this case, y is our variable, for, so that's the one we're trying to find the roots for. So let's identify what our a, b, and c values are. So a coefficient looks like it's a 2. b coefficient, negative 3. And c coefficient, negative 2. Don't forget you need those negatives in once we have our coefficients, actually, I prefer to do it right here. 
this will be a little bit very smaller. Y equals negative, and our B value is negative 3. Right? If you want, put it, if you get a negative value for a coefficient, it might help if you throw that in a bracket, just so you recognize that that is a double negative that will turn positive. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's negative 3, squared, minus 4, a, which is 2, and c, which is negative 2. All divided by... 2 times a, which is 2. Now we're just going to simplify a bit. We're finished our substitutions. So this is going to be positive 3 plus or minus the square root of uh, minus 3 squared is 9. Here we're going to have a double negative. So that's going to be positive. 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 again is 16. All divided by times 2 is 4. So let me just continue this over here. So now y equals 3 plus or minus, this is 9 plus 16 is 25, and the square root of 25 is just 5. All divided by 4. So this gives us two answers. Let's first look at the first one. All right? 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So that's one possible value. The other is 3 minus 5, which is negative 2, over 4. And we can simplify that fraction to negative 1 half. So these are your two roots for this equation. All right. So I am still going to pause it here. What I want you to do is try question two on your, on your own. I want to make sure you guys can do this as well. And then I will do it with you. All right, so for the next question, we do need to have it equal to zero, right? whereas this one equals 14. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract 14 from both sides so that our equation equals zero. Now we can identify our coefficients. We can also see how this would be a difficult one to try and factor. Right? Your first choice when you see a question like this might not be to factor it. So we're going to use the quadratic equation where a equals 20. Quadratic formula, sorry. Uh, b equals, I forgot my x here, 27. And c equals negative 14. So now we can put it into our formula. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, and I would have to say, if I were to think back to when I was in high school, this is probably the one formula I probably will remember for the rest of my life <laughs> the quadratic formula. Just used it so much. So negative b, which is 27, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 27 squared, minus 4a, which is 20, times c, which is minus 14, all over to a, which is 20. All right, so let's figure out that square root first. 27 squared is 729. Okay, here's a double negative, so we're going to add the product of those three, which is 1,120, and that's all divided by 2 times 20, which is 40. Already running out of room. All right, so your square root adds to 1,849. And if you take the square root of that, you get 43. So this is going to equal minus 27 
plus or minus 43 all over 40. So we need to figure out our two roots then. So x equals minus 27 plus 43 over 40, right, which reduces to two-fifths. You can do that on your calculator if you want to. And then x also equals minus 27 minus 43 all over 40, which reduces to minus 7 fourths. Okay, so those are our two roots. This one and this one. Alright, so our third example, again, huge numbers, just to show you that you might not choose to factor this one. You might want to use the quadratic formula. This one we don't have to rearrange, so A is 48, B is minus 58, and C is 15. So when we use our equation, x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so minus b. Now if you want, you can realize that's a negative and that's a negative, so it's just 58. But if you're not comfortable doing that, use the brackets like we did before. And then b squared, so it's minus 58 squared. But again, um, if you're using a calculator, use brackets. Don't write minus 58 squared, write bracket minus 58 squared. Or your calculator will give you a negative number. Minus 4, a is 48, and c is 15. All over to a, which is 48. Now in your bracket, you get 3,364 minus 2,880, which gives you the square root of 484, or 96. Okay, continuing, that leaves us with x equals 58. Plus or minus square root of 44 is 22, all over 96. And this leads to two solutions. Um, leave it as a fraction, but put it in simplest terms, 5 over 6. And x equals 3 over 8.